Hey, what's up, Vox and Hops heads? I'm Matt, the vocals of Cryptopsy. You're listening to my podcast, Vox and Hops, where I sit down with fellow metal musicians to talk about their lives, music, and craft beer. I hope that you guys have had a great weekend. I sincerely enjoyed the sunshine. Once again, there was some sunshine up here in Montreal, which has not been happening very often. So me and the family, we went outside and we uh, took advantage of it. And I hope that you guys had a chance to do the same. Uh, when I was out there, though, I saw far too many discarded gloves and face masks. It's disgusting. I don't want to see this. So if you are wearing gloves and you are wearing masks, and if this does become something that will become mandatory in the future, I hope that uh, everyone has enough uh, self-respect and responsibility to pick it up and to dispose of it properly because uh, it's absolutely disgusting and I don't want my kids near any of that shit. So pick up your face masks, pick up your gloves, throw them in the garbage, and pick up your regular trash as well, please. Uh, it's our earth. we got to take care of it. Today is the final spotlight on Everlasting Spew Records feature. I'm so happy that this idea came to fruition. Massive shout-out to, to Tito for helping me set this up and to Giorgio, as well, I love uh, Everlasting Spew Records. Their bands are brutal, amazing. Today I'm very proud to play a track from Void Rot. This track is called Accursed Earth, taken from their split with Atavisma. Here it is. Turn it up to 11. Enjoyed Accursed Earth from Void Rot. <laughs>
That was fucking brutal. I loved it. I want more. I want more Void Rot. Uh, I love that they've done a split, but I want more. So uh, everyone out there, uh, I hope that you enjoyed that. If you did enjoy that, if you are a fan of Void Rot, if you've just discovered them right now, go check them out. I have put their appropriate links to their social medias and to their big cartel page in the description of this podcast. Go give them some love. we got to support extreme music. Today on the podcast, I am with Giorgio Spevo, one of the main people behind Everlasting Spew Records. Here it is, Vox and Hops, episode number 138. I warn you, what you are about to hear is very disturbing indeed. Hey, what's up, everyone? Today I'm with Giorgio Spevo from Everlasting Spew Records. I am super stoked to be with you. Even though we are not actually together, it is still nice to hang out with metal people through the internet. How are you? I've been doing a whole spotlight on Everlasting Spew Records. This is an idea that spawned from a conversation with Tito, your business partner. Uh, And I've been really enjoying it, actually. It's something that I'm going to continue doing. I like uh, presenting extreme underground music before my episodes. And I've, uh, I've actually made some discoveries myself, believe it or not. I, I feel like I'm super connected to the underground metal scene, but sometimes I guess I'm not as connected as I would like to be. So uh, how are you? Uh, you are in Italy. You guys have been in lockdown for much longer than the rest of the world. How are you handling social isolation? Hi, Matt. Thanks for, uh, thanks for asking me to join you on this, uh, on this conversation. Um, and o- of course, also thanks you for, for, the, for all the exposure on, the, on our bands and on the label. Uh, our, how is it uh, being in, in a lockdown for uh, 50 days? Well, I'm pretty, pretty close to, to get crazy because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think you can imagine it's, uh, really, it's really hard here because you can only go out to, to, to go to the supermarket, to go to the pharmacies uh, or to go to the post office and uh, that's it. You you cannot meet uh, nobody. You you can just have relationships maybe with the people who's working at the supermarket. Maybe <laughs> <laughs> there, are, there are some love stories uh, 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 born in, born in from from this uh, situation. But really, I'm I'm getting mad. Probably this is coming to an end because they have just announced yesterday that we are going to enter into phase two in uh, one week and uh, so i'm i'm here waiting every day for for news and see actually what will mean uh, phase two uh, which which will be the 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 new conditions of this uh, lockdown probably it will be a little bit uh, less uh, less hard to live but uh, it will still be a lockdown not 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 like it was before but a little bit lighter to to live. Fifty days, and it's it's absolutely crazy. For everyone at home, uh, Giorgio is sitting in front of a vast record collection behind him right now. You've had the time just about to listen to all of those <laughs> in fifty days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in fifty days, actually, I I had a lot of uh, stacks of uh, records of vinyl and stuff to 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 listen and uh, fortunately these these 50 days allowed me to 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 listen to them to make a lot of packets to recover a lot of uh, uh, a lot of things that were lost uh, that we uh, managed to okay we are doing this with with the label we are going to manage this and that but you know uh, time is always a uh, it's always difficult to to manage with, and uh, at least with this lockdown, we we had the the chance to to recover a lot of things, and uh, to probably we will start 
much more better when all of this will uh, will finish. That's that's a, a part of the good news of, of social isolation. Yeah, absolutely. To give you that time of, to f- fit, to dot all the I's and cross all the T's of all the projects that you've had in the back in your, your dusty old corner of your closet. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've spoken to a lot of artists uh, during uh, social isolation and a lot of them tend to be recluse and like to be in on their own is that the same for you? Are you someone that's more of an introvert or are you an extrovert that likes to be out amongst the people? I'm usually uh, an extrovert. So I like to, to go out to meet people, to, to go to restaurants, uh, cinemas, uh, to have a drink uh, with, with friends, with people, go to concerts and stuff like that. But uh, I was asking, I was actually asking myself uh, about this uh, today and yesterday because uh, I felt that I, I changed a little bit my, my, probably my situation and my, 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 my proposition towards the, the external side of, of my house. I don't know, I, 50, 50 days in these conditions probably uh, changed change a few things into how you manage interactions with, with people. Uh, it's uh, it's 50 days. I'm not talking fa- face to face with 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 nobody. Uh, my my parents, for example, my brother is living at 10 kilometers from where I live, but I cannot see them because uh, we cannot move from the city where we live, and we cannot meet parents. And so the, this this situation is not really fitting with me very much. But it changed me. Uh, so I, I I'm not sure about how it will be when I will go out because of course this will change uh, my my social life but also my work the the way I'm going to approach people with with work and with during my daily work of course and and with stuff like that so I I don't know it it's something I will probably discover in the next few weeks but mm, probably something changed into me a lot of things have changed thanks to COVID nineteen and. We, we have not seen the end of it, uh, and it will be in all of the history books, that's for damn sure. Be, because also, uh, probably, uh, people is just talking about Italy uh, as one of the most hit uh, countries in the, in the world, but it, it, I'm actually in one of the most hit regions in Italy. Wow. Uh, so Brescia and Bergamo, it's probably two of the provinces that have been really hit very hard during these uh, 50 days. And just to, just to tell you some numbers, uh, without, without going uh, with, the, with the official numbers and just looking at, at deaths, the uh, number of deaths in, in my province have increased uh, 2.5 uh, uh, compared uh, to the deaths uh, last year and the year before. Wow. So, for example, uh, we had 100 last year and we have 250 this year. In Bergamo, which is a province near, uh, n- near mine, uh, the, the, the number is uh, five times more. Holy shit. And, and it's crazy. And when I hear people uh, saying, oh, it's just a flu, oh, it's uh, not hitting even like a flu, and it, people is getting crazy and there are no reasons. Well, uh, I, I really suggest them to reconsider what they say. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's, it's affected a lot of more people than people think, especially when it's close, when it's close to home. Yeah. yeah, of course, because also I know a lot of people who were hit mm. by COVID-19, a lot of people who, who have lost their relatives and so on. So it's not really, it was really, really hard during the past days. Brescia is a beautiful city too. I've played, I want to say twice with Cryptopsy in a venue, a big, big venue with lots of interesting couches. <laughs> no, you, you don't want to hear the story about those couches. I do, I, I do, because I've spoken to many touring <laughs> musicians and we always talk yeah. about the well, couches. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that place was actually um, a, street, a street bar. Yes. <laughs> okay. But the pro- probably you already imagined that. It, it makes sense, yeah. Yeah, that that place was a strip bar before to become a colony. 
Yes, Sikoro Colin Colony, right? Sikoro Colony. Colony. Yes, yes. I don't know. It was fun. It was fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I walked into Brescia that day. I walked from the venue into town. I went into the cathedral. And in the basement of the cathedral, there is a, a piece of uh, the shroud that was Jesus was wrapped in, apparently. Yeah, there are probably a million of those pieces <laughs> scattered around the world. But everybody is saying that, uh, okay, this is original. This is the real one. But you know, you know how, how it works. Of course. Anyway, uh, the, the, the place was a street bar and probably, you know, if you're going to, to test those couches with the luminol, probably. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to, no. No, you don't want to know. You don't want to know, you don't want to see. But anyway, <laughs> that, that place is not existing anymore. No. Oh. Really, yeah. Unfortunately, some bad choices from the, from the owner. So that's, that's, that place is no more. No, oh, too bad. Unfortunately. Vox and Hops is all about hanging out with uh, my metal friends, talking about their lives, music, and craft beer. Um, when we set this up, you were like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get craft beer because of the lockdown, but you messaged me right before this saying, look what I found. So I want to hear the story of this beer that you have. Well, this is, a, um, this is an Italian beer. It's a, it's, a, um, it's a craft beer, an American pale ale. Uh, it's a 7.5, so it's pretty strong, actually. And uh, it's a gold beer. It's called uh, Open Gold from, the, from Baladin, uh, which, is a, which is a place in uh, Piemonte, which is a region in the, uh, in the western side of Italy. And uh, it's pretty strong, pretty, you know, Basically, uh, an American pale ale, nothing, nothing really uh, strange to to tell you, but pretty good beer. Sounds awesome. Pro- probably, probably the the the, be- the best from Italy. Awesome, that's good to hear. And I'll keep my keep my eye eye open for next time I'm out there. Um, I received these today. I was very excited. I've been in communication with uh, the wonderful people from Villain Brewery here in Quebec. And uh, right before we started this interview, they, they dropped off a few beers for me. So shout out to them. This is their new uh, Yukon IPA, our, our Northwestern IPA, brewed with uh, Chinook, Simcoe, Citra, and Columbus hops. Classic hops right there. I have not had this yet. Uh, this is a uh, clock in 6%. Shout out to Villain for uh, helping me fuel my Vox and Hops conversations with all my friends from around the globe. Cheers to Giorgio. Cheers, man. It's nice. Uh, Bitter. Not overly bitter, but just like like the initial bitter bite. Um, Very drinkable. Ville beers uh, tend to be extremely crushable. I love their can art. Uh, Much love and respect. Uh, Thank you guys again so much. Um, Let's touch on Everlasting Spew Records. Were you or are you, and I apologize if I don't know the answer to this already, um, have you ever played in bands? Uh, were you a musician? Let's touch on that. No, actually, I've never been a, a musician, and probably I I started a label probably because um, because I recognized that I was not able to to play in a proper way. So uh, I wanted to be part of the scene and. Uh, because actually, one of the things that probably you don't know is ever is the fact that Everlasting Spew is not my first label. Oh, uh, Everlasting Spew is actually a, a sort of continuation of a label that existed uh, when I was in my twenty, uh, which was called the Spew Records. Uh, it started in ninety eight, and uh, I managed it uh, till two thousand and five. And I I was mainly into grindcore, death metal, death grind. Some of the releases I put out were the first two albums from Lenche, the Belgian uh, Belgian band, because I was in touch with Sven from Aborted, and he was playing drums with mm-hmm. uh, with Lenche. I'm actually saying an anecdote an anecdote uh, about uh, about this band. When I when I met uh, Sven mm, online, uh, the band actually was called Anal Torture, and uh, <laughs> of course it was. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and they they already signed with uh, with another label, another Italian label actually, 
uh, but they didn't want to, to continue with the with that label, and so they 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 managed to make a, a fake uh, split up, and they reformed it with a, with a new band, with a new name, with a new moniker, and and stuff like that. So they recorded uh, the debut album and uh, some tracks for a uh, for a seven inches which was uh, uh, a split with Black Ops. Uh, Black Ops was actually a band formed by three guys from Impaled and Enke from Retaliation, the Swedish grindcore band, because Enke was in the uh, United States for, I don't know, probably a vacation or something like that. So they, they took time to record the, those three four tracks and we made the, that split so uh, we released the, those, those those two records from Lenche I released also Sadokismo from Cock and Ball Torture which is probably one, one of the most uh, girl grind uh, famous records uh, around uh, still nowadays and some split seven inches with uh, bird flesh uh, clotted symmetric sexual organ uh, splatter house, machetazo, and so on. So it was it was cool because actually I was just in my twenty. I I really had no no money. I was no ab- not able to 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 manage deals with the bands, to make promotions, to make you know there were no there were no Facebook, there were no MySpace, there were. I just remember I was talking with with people with the ICQ. Probably don't you don't. <laughs> yeah, no, I do. Of course, I know that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. and and you you didn't have um, you didn't have stores. You just had a, an HTML page in which you had the list of all the records you you had available to the to the public, and people was writing to you, was sending money in the letters and stuff like that. So it was. The, the old way, you know. Yeah, yeah, stuff that kids nowadays would never understand. ICQ, for anyone that is listening that doesn't know what it was, it was like an old form of internet messaging. But but back in the day, people used to put money in an envelope and mail it across the ocean, and then you would yeah. take that money, and then you would put a CD that was <laughs> put it, and then they would mail it back. You had to be patient when you were a metal fan back in the day. Yeah, you had to wait at least... Uh, Three three months probably three or four <laughs> months insane. or something, but at least at least, and you have people right now that is writing you after twenty four hours. Hey, where is my city? Hey, <laughs> yo, come on, <laughs> you spoiled rich people. <laughs> yeah, so uh, that that was actually my the beginning of my uh, interaction as a label manager. Let's say so. Um, I. I stopped it in 2005. Uh, um, I I don't remember actually uh, why, but I don't know. I was probably tired because people uh, were, was not going any, to concerts anymore, was not buying records anymore. It was a difficult period. Uh, it was the, the the period in which MySpace was starting and people was uh, was starting to to download and, you know, they were just downloading, not, not listening to music and they were not buying any records anymore. So I got pretty tired of that. And uh, I said, uh, okay, I'm going to quit. So, so I, actually, I actually did it for something like 10 years, 10 or 11 years. I just stayed in the aside buying some records here and there. And and then it was in at the end of 2015 or 2016 probably. I said to myself, I miss that. I really miss that. I I really need I really need again it in my life. I really need again that uh, that that feeling. I don't know talking to people. Uh, Feeling again, I'm part of a of a scene. I'm part. Of, I'm doing something for the scene. I'm releasing stuff that I like. I, I'm getting uh, compliments from from people because I have released something that uh, they really like uh, or they have listened to many times. Uh, I I really miss that 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 feeling that sen- that uh, that sensation. So I I I had to start again and. Uh, 
Of course, it was again something to build from from scratch. And the first thing that mm, that I that that really connected me with my old days was uh, I don't know I I wanted to to re-release something from my old days. I don't know. So, as it was something like a, a bridge between the old label and the new one. So I, I got in touch with Skeleton of God, which, uh, which is a band from, uh, from Colorado, which was a band from Colorado. And we managed to reissue the, their latest album, Primordial Dominion, which was uh, uh, just released on CD, not on vinyl. And also the CD was not distributed very well. So I started from there and uh, uh, bridge by bridge, uh, piece by piece, I, I constructed the, the label. I got in touch with, uh, with Tito. Uh, I offered him to, to help me. He, he accepted and uh, here we are. Oh, shout out to Tito uh, for being a very, very good vocal person on the internet because I've known Tito <laughs> quite some time just because of his posts on Facebook. Uh, I was confused when I went out on tour with Hideous Divinity that he wasn't in the band because he talks about them so much, but it turns out he's their manager and that makes sense. <laughs> um, something that uh, usually people mm, don't know about me and Tito is that we are working at different hours. So I'm, a, I'm mainly a morning guy and Wiley is, uh, he is completely the country. <laughs> uh, so we are probably leaving messages uh, to to each other when I wake up at six o'clock, six and a half in the morning, and he is going to bed at that time. <laughs> so it's uh, it's something people people is always oh tell Tito something okay yeah okay it, I can assure you it it's not that easy it's not that easy to talk <laughs> with him. <laughs> You have to be patient. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you have to be patient. Like, like it was 20 years ago with, the, exactly. no, that'll be with the theme. orders. That's the theme of our podcast so far, patience. <laughs> also, another thing that not all the people know is that uh, I'm living in the north of Italy and I'm handling all the, all the, um, the distribution, the, the records, the shipments and stuff like that. And he's living instead in Rome, which is uh, 600 kilometers from where I live. So it's not it's not really easy to to manage each other. Of course, we we just uh, we just call each other. We just write messages and stuff like that. We we had a chance once. Uh, I was in Rome because because of work. I told him, okay, let's let's drink a coffee together. And uh, he didn't have time to to do that. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> I've done. 600 kilometers <laughs> and I'm in your city. Come on. Uh, but, he, uh, I've heard he likes to stay inside and work out. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. He had, he had to work. He had to work on the computer. He's a, he really, he probably is one of the most hard worker I've ever met in my, my whole life. It, it is incredible. He really, I don't know if it's just because he's uh, still young uh, and maybe when he will be older, maybe he will, he will be less, uh, less, less stronger with this method, with this, uh, uh, fire that he has inside of him. But he, he really is nowadays one of the most uh, hard worker I ever met in my whole life. That is why when I thought about setting up this whole spotlight thing, it was an absolute easy decision for me. Because uh, I, I see it. I see his hunger, his hustle, and it's something that I don't mind supporting whatsoever and being behind. Let's touch on um, some of the bands that you're excited that are on the label right now. You guys seem to have a, a real, like, uh, all of the bands that are on your label are everlasting spew. You've, you seem to have found a niche that has become your label, and that's interesting. So how do you go about choosing bands are bands sending you stuff or is it really you guys just still hunting and finding the bands that you want to represent? Actually, at the beginning, we wanted to be, to have a wider, a wider approach, including uh, different, uh, different, uh, different styles. 
but we soon we soon uh, recognized that it was not working very well so we decided to uh, diminish a little bit the 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 the, the opening uh, of of this uh, of this search of, of these new bands and we we just wanted to to have bands that that had uh, uh, um, death metal into their sound, which can be also doom death, death black, but they always have to have a death metal component into their sound. So this is something that we reached uh, not not really at the beginning, but during our uh, our uh, our path probably. Uh, the bands that we are singing are um, coming mainly from uh, from our searches. Cool. Uh, mainly, mainly coming from our searches. It's probably something like uh, half and half from from me and Tito. Uh, we we split half and half the the new, the new singing and the new. Um, and the new deals with the, with the bands uh, and the the demos that we are getting from bands are probably not really on level with what what we want to do. Uh, it's uh, sad to say, but uh, they probably uh, always miss something. Uh, I don't know. We 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 want we want to see bands that uh, have a uh, have a strong focus on what they want to reach. Uh, so I, let, let me make an example. Uh, a band with uh, with which we we have worked did was, was Vitriol. And, yes, uh, so good. And, and you have seen them uh, in in just probably a few months. They have already seen to a big label. They have already uh, done tours. They they had to to make some tours, but of course, COVID nineteen. Uh, ruin their their plans, but but you can see which which is the kind of uh, bands that we are looking for. The, the, they have uh, they have the fire inside. Mm-hmm. They have a, a a program. They 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 know what what they want. When they came to us, they told us that they already had twelve or thirteen offers to release their AP. Okay. Um, but I think that they have a plan on on, on where they they wanted to to go. What what do they wanted to reach? And it, it's band like this. Of course, it's it's difficult to find a band that is uh, so focused. But this is this is probably the what we what we are looking for into bands. Yeah, not only just just a good song. You want their focus and and their hunger and their drive to be in the right place. Yeah, so. because it, it's not just about music. It's uh, music, of course, is yes. that gets you that that get that gets you get gets them in the door. Yeah, because they, well, you wouldn't even let them in the room if the music wasn't <laughs> up to par. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But to actually sign 60. them, they gotta have the rest, the other forty percent. Yeah, absolutely. They need they need a focus. They need uh, they they have to have clear ideas on what they want to do with merch, what do we want to do with the uh, with the live component, what they want to do with the social uh, interactions, and it's uh, it's sad when you when you meet a band that is that is telling you that uh, no, I don't care about those things. Uh, it's just a a label matter. Okay, mm-hmm. you just have to think about it. I, I cannot I cannot think uh, about it just just by my side. We ha- we have to be a, a team. We we have to to join our forces into this because it, it's it's your best and it's our best. So we have to join our forces to reach the best for 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 both of us. And this this is something that is lacking in many bands around, unfortunately. How do you feel when bands such as Vitriol leave Everlasting Spew because either you guys finish your contract and you guys don't get a chance to re-sign them and they move to bigger labels such as Vitriol went to Century Media? Are you proud or is there a bit of uh, jealousy? How, how, do you, how do you approach that? 
I was actually really proud. I was actually really proud of that. And I was actually really happy for them because, because this is probably what they wanted to do from the first day. This is, this is their plan. So we, we helped them reaching what they wanted to reach. And of course, I know I, I won't, I will never be able to, to be, uh, uh, to compare with, with, with labels like Metal Blade, with Century Media, with Nuclear Blast, but, but even Relapse or Willowtip, those are labels that are much more bigger than us, so we cannot compete with them. And when a, when a band of ours is going with, with bigger labels, of course I'm happy, because this is a, this is a sort of uh, certification that I'm still able to recognize if a if a band is uh, really has something more than the others, and this m- makes me proud, actually. It's like it's like your your daughter's wedding day, and you're passing <laughs> yeah. her along, yeah, <laughs> to her Pro- groom. <laughs> Pro- probably, <laughs> and never thought about that that way, but probably it's it's, it's a good comparison. Yeah, that's that's a very mature approach. So so you're, you're comfortable. I, I don't want to say being like a stepping stone label. Yeah, we are we are comfortable with with that, and this is probably the dimension, the maximum dimension that we can uh, that we can afford at the moment. We don't have the the capacity to push bands like uh, like other labels, so uh, we don't we don't want to to lie to ourselves or to or to bands. This is what we can do, and. Uh, we are, we, are, we are very happy to, to be able to, to give you this and to help you make the, the, the final jump to go on a, on a bigger label. Vitriol made that, uh, uh, Guerrilla also made that because they are now on Season of Myth. So I'm happy to, to have been a part of their, of their history. Uh, so when someone probably in 10 years, 20 years, uh, is going to to see the discography of this kind of band and w- where do they start it? And and I'm very happy that they can see our name there. Yeah, and who knows if it, had you not supported these bands when they were young, they might have given up. They might have thought that no one believes in us, but you believed in them and you gave them that exposure. So that other people can see them, and then it fueled their desire to move forward, which is wonderful. They would have probably have chosen some other labels, probably, and they would still uh, be in the place like where they are at the moment. But uh, they have chosen us, so this makes me proud. B- bands like bands like those have chosen us because they, they have they have seen us as as the as the element they needed to make the, 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 their path to the success, let's call it this way. Uh, what should a young band, you say that they need good music, they need to be hungry, they need to have the fire. Uh, how could they come and contact you if they feel like they have that so that they can become hypothetically the next vitriol? Well, of course, people can contact us in many ways. We are very active uh, on social networks with like Facebook, uh, Instagram and so on. We have a website. We, have, uh, ver- we are very responsive on, uh, on emails, on messages. So we try to do our best to respond to, to everyone. Of course, it's not possible to respond to, to, to give answer to, to everyone because they are many. But we try our best, of course. And uh, and people can reach us. We listen to everything. We listen to every demo, and uh, they can be sure that if we if if we feel something, we will get in touch with them. Maybe we are not going to manage anything together. Maybe I don't know because it happened several times with several bands. We tried to to make something, but uh, at the end we didn't find the the exact terms and the exact uh, combination of elements, but, uh, but we got in touch with them. So if we feel something, we, we, we give them a shout. Absolutely. That's right. All you Vox and Hopsheads out there that want to be on Everlasting Spew Records, 
you send them a message, you say that you listen to this episode, and they're going to listen to it. Okay. <laughs> Doesn't mean they're going to write you back, but if you got the music, that's your 60% in the door, but you need the fire and the hunger. Uh, Giorgio, thank you so much for coming, sharing a beer with me. One last question. What is your hangover cure? My hangover tune? No, your cure. Like, when you're hungover, what do you do to make yourself feel better? <sighs> Well, of course, I, I listen to Legion from this side. <laughs> really? That really? Makes, that uh, makes you feel better. <laughs> I, it, it's actually, I have a, a very strange uh, relationship with that, with that record. It's probably one of the, of the re- uh, it, it's a go-to record for me. It's, whenever, whenever I feel the need, I go to that record because it's just... 20, 26 or 27 minutes of pure energy. And uh, it makes me feel better in w- whichever condition I am. Eh? That, that, that record has always given me something, something more. So if I have an hangover, if I'm, I'm sad for something, if I'm angry for work, for, for other stuff or for a relation or for other things, uh, that, that's a go-to record. Yeah, that's the first time anyone's ever said that to me on the podcast. So, Giorgio, thank you so, so much. I really appreciate it. Everybody, go out, support Everlasting's Few Records. They uh, have their heart and soul in this, and they are doing it for the good of the metal scene, and I love that, and I appreciate that. And uh, just everyone go out there and support the things that you love, including craft beer and death metal. Giorgio, thank you so much. Cheers. Thanks to you, Matt. Uh, thanks to you for the chat, and cheers. Hey, thank you so much for listening right to the end. You know that I love and appreciate that. I had such a great chat with Giorgio. It's uh, really interesting to uh, get behind the label side of the music industry. I believe this is the first record exec that I have on the podcast, which leads me to want to have more of them. I thought that the conversation was very interesting, and I hope that you guys enjoyed it as much as I did. Uh, So everyone go out there, support Everlasting Spew Records. They are doing great things for extreme music, and I stand behind them 100%, and I suggest that you do as well. I hope that you have a good rest of the week. I have two more episodes coming at you, one of them on Wednesday and then another on Friday. But until then, I hope you enjoy life, metal, and craft beer. Cheers, Vox and Offsets.